Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara and today we're going into the classroom to wish a teacher happy Valentine's Day. We're using the heart garland backdrop and portrait, just add glitter, screen time, bicycle built for you, ho ho holidays, den sweet den, Christmas dreams, virtual friends add on, and simply celebrate hearts. You could create the scene in the landscape position or portrait, and portrait's what I'm gonna to use today. I have a scratch piece of typing paper or printer paper, and ooh, look at my new chamois. Ooh. <laughs> I put it there so you could watch me ink that up. It's so hard to wanna to ink up a brand new chamois, but well, you're here for moral support, so we'll do it together. Oh. Yeah, I know, it's just hard to watch. All right, but I've got some jet black ink on the side and I am stamping all the different images that I want in the scene. So I stamped the chair and then Santa's wife, Mrs. Claus, is stepping in as the teacher. Now I have a couple of chairs around that table and two students are going to be sitting in those chairs and then there'll be some other kids on the floor. So here's a little boy and I'm just kind of figuring out where they're going to go. They're all just layered. You can see everything. It's kind of a mess, but uh, there is a method to this madness. We're going to mask a bunch today. So we're going to create our scene, but this is, I think, the easiest way to get all of these images exactly where you want them on your scene. I'm not being very careful about my stamping. I just want to get everything positioned. So she's got a pencil and we've got some paper here. So this scene, the kids are making their Valentine cards and their teacher's reading them a Valentine story while they are working. So they have all of their school supplies out, making a good old mess. <laughs> so. I thought this would be a good Valentine to give to a teacher who works so hard during this time of year. Uh, now that I have everything stamped down, I've cut out my heart garland backdrop out of chili pepper cardstock, and I'm just deciding exactly where these images should be stamped on my four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of paper. So you can see I've got about a quarter inch up at the top. I'm gonna to bring that down so that I have that scene where I want it on the card. Next, I'm numbering the images that are in the front. So they all get a one if they're in the front. So always stamp front first. And now that I've determined which ones are in the front, I'm going to lay those stamps, lie those stamps, I'm going to place those stamps right over where I had stamped them before. So once I have some of those number ones all in place, I'll pick those up on the door of the Misty and then flip up my scene and take my jet black ink and ink those stamps up and stamp them down and <laughs> they look pretty random right there don't they all right i have those all stamped and i had a couple of extra little pieces so i didn't want to stamp it all at once and one of them was a duplicate so i've got those on the scene where i want them and pick those up again flip up my scene ink them up stamp them down and more random images. <laughs> well, I have cut little masks for each of those little images out of full stick post-it notes. I stamped them on the post-it note and then cut them out. And now I'm placing them on the images that are stamped on the paper. Now I'm gonna decide what is the second layer. So I'm putting a number two on anything that I think would be stamped next. So the little boy and the paper on the floor. Pick those up and ink them up and stamp them down. Kind of, well, you can see the pattern here. I'm gonna do that for the entire scene. 
Now, if you didn't like to mask, then you could just make this scene by stamping all the images, cutting them out with the coordinating dies, and then layering them on top of each other. But I just thought this would be a fun technique to share. And it is really fun to see them once all the masks come off uh, to see how the whole scene just kind of comes together. Adding the paper from behind the little boy and then the girl who's in the front and also uh, the teacher on the chair. So those two, the girl and the teacher, they could technically be also part of that second layer, but uh, it doesn't matter how many layers you stamp, but for sure that paper needed to be behind the boy, even just slightly so that it was uh, not on top of his head, but it will be on the table instead. Masking up the little girl and the teacher. And what's next? Well, it's the table and the rug. So positioning that table where it goes. And you won't really see the legs of the table. I've got so much going on, but it's it'll be pretty clear that, that there's a table there. And you could make it where you see more of the table legs. I just like the big full scene of the classroom. Stamp those down and mask them up. And then onto the kids in the background. So we've got this little girl and the boy and the chair. The chair will be behind the teacher. The teacher's chair is the final layer. Uh, on that side, but there will be the chairs that will go behind these two kids. So we'll need to mask up the kids, but not the teacher's chair. So let's stamp these guys all down and then mask them up, two kids, and then one more layer, and that's those two chairs that the kids are sitting in. And since they are both sitting in the same chair, we're going to stamp them one at a time. Once the entire scene is stamped, it's time for the reveal. So I'm going to speed this up a bit as I take all of the masks off. But you can see layer by layer, it's coming together. So that book is in front of the teacher who is sitting on the chair. Those kids are behind the table and the ones in front have their little Valentine supplies. Seeing them framed up, I'll probably trim off a quarter inch off the right. But first, I'm going to color everybody up, and I'm going to focus today on hair and skin because I'm typically coloring animals, <laughs> little critters. And so I thought we'd focus on hair and skin this time. So I started with a base of E00 on everyone, and that was just so that I could find all of the skin areas. I still missed the one girl's leg. I missed her leg. <laughs> The one sitting on the chair. I'll get it. Don't worry. It, it'll it happen. But I'm mostly using E20s. So uh, all a variety of the 20s. So here's that E21 blended into the E00. But some of the kids are going to have darker skin, lighter skin, just uh, shadows from their hair. Here's the E27 for a rich brown and getting those shadows in. So she had E23, and I skipped over the E25, giving her uh, a real contrast from right under her hair to the rest of her face. And you can see I'm even getting darker up under their hairlines there so that the hair kind of comes forward a bit. I decided Michael's gonna have, yeah, that, that's Mike. <laughs> this is my third grade class. Uh, he's gonna have darker skin because he had darker skin. And so he had the E23 and just giving him some shadow with that E27. And oh, here I am blending with that E25, just a touch and then down to the E23. Blending the rest of it out with the E21. I think I'm working way too hard on that skin blend. <laughs> but onto the hair now. This is Janine, and <laughs> she's she's gonna start with some E35 for her hair. 
and just coloring all over and then giving the the low lights, I guess, with an E29, getting the back of her hair and where those curls go. She had nice, thick, full hair, didn't she? <laughs> uh, but then going on to the E49, get really dark in the back there. I'm speeding up the coloring here because if we're going to color five people's hair, <laughs> we probably need to speed it up a bit. So this is not my normal coloring pace, but you can see we're onto the, this is Stephen. So Stephen had kind of a uh, sandy blonde hair. So using the Y23 and 26 and then coming in with those E20s kind of Brown it up a little bit. So there's that E23. Give some uh, texture and then blend that in with that Y23. This is Michelle. And Michelle had kind of a, a reddish brown hair. And oops, I skipped over that E17 that was added to her hair. But I had E18 in there and now blending it back in with the E13. Michael is sporting the E47s and 49s. And then I'm going to get real dark with the 100, which is a black Copic marker, and give him some darker shadows. I decided Mrs. Claus should get some uh, Clairol hair color in her hair. So she's got the E30s going on. And this is Mrs. Jepson, actually. Uh, so I thought she was old, but she was probably 40 at the tops, you know, at the time. I'm not going to show all the coloring, but I did want to highlight this rug for you because this is the RV212325 combination. And it goes very well with that guava cardstock from Lawn Fawn. So I just wanted to mention that, point that out. And then here's Mrs. Jepson's dress. She's got a, a lovely Y15 and 17 going on. Uh, same as Janine's shirt. Uh, looks like Stephen's ready to go to work at Target. Um, and then Michelle's wearing her pink dress that matches the rug. So again, RV21 through 25. And the blues were B0002 and 05. The reds were the R20, so 24, 27, and 29. And Mrs. Jepson is wearing some sensible brown shoes, so <laughs> the E20s. Now, the nice thing about masks is they are reusable, and I cut them all out, so why not use them again? I'm going to mask them all up so that I can ink blend over them. I didn't have to mask everything because, for example, those scissors are in Stephen's hands. He's playing with the scissors and uh, he is covering them with his mask. So I didn't need to use those. But for the most part, all of the masks are going back on. And I had to cut a couple of extra masks because I didn't have chairs masked and the rug as well. So here's how I masked everything. I took my stamp and stamped it down on this full stick post-it note and just cut it out with my scissors. Lawn Fawn stamps have a nice line around them so it's not too thick, not too thin. It's a nice one to cut around and I like to cut a little bit inside the line so that if I'm stamping over a mask or ink blending over it, I get a nice impression all the way up to that image, right? Cutting out my chair, and I don't have to cut everything on this chair because uh, Mrs. Jepson is sitting in that chair, but for the most part, cutting out everything on this chair. Back in third grade, they didn't call it attention deficit, but it was more called daydreaming. And I was a daydreamer, so poor Mrs. Jepson. But she was great. She would give me little chores to do in the class, water the plants, and feed the hamsters. I have, I have very good memories of Mrs. Jepson. All right, well, now I'm dividing the scene by creating a floor and a wall. So this is our hickory smoke distress oxide floor, which is a nice warm gray. I used cool grays on 
the shading of everything else so it'll show up nicely on this warm gray floor. It's ink blending everywhere. Once I have that fully blended, I can turn it around and I'm using Mermaid Lagoon for the wall color here. One thing I like about Distress Oxides is that I can get a nice blend on the paper that I color with Copic markers. Typically, if I'm going to ink blend with regular Distress, I like to use Bristol Smooth Cardstock and get a nice blend on that. But if I am blending on the paper that I'm using to Copic color, then it's nice to have those oxides because they just smooth out a little bit more. All right, here is that fun reveal, taking off all those masks. And if I wanted to stamp the sentiment right on this paper, I would have a one layer card, but I never end up with a one layer card. Uh, and especially when you've got great things like the heart garland backdrop to go all around it. So that's really going to bring it into the Valentine decorated classroom look. I'm going to touch it up a little bit with a W2. That's a warm gray. It doesn't really need much of anything, but I realized there was this little bit that was not ink blended. So I put those masks back on, actually used the rug <laughs> on the table, but got that tiny little space ink blended. So it's all set to go using my jumbo glue tube for that heart garland backdrop. Just gluing it all around the rectangle portion. I'm, I don't feel like I need any on the hearts at all. So add that to my scene. And I did chop off that quarter inch on the right so that they're a little bit more centered. The die set comes with individual hearts, and so I cut those out of white cardstock and guava cardstock. I'm adhering those onto those heart banners. Give that room that festive look. <laughs> I'll use my tape runner and adhere this panel to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And now to decide about the sentiment. And this is from the Simply Celebrate Hearts. And it could be stamped right on the bottom, or it could go on this banner that comes from the Heart Garland Backdrop landscape one. But I wanted to use the banner that came with this backdrop, which is the portrait ba backdrop. And I cut that banner twice, cut it out of guava card stock. I'm going to heat emboss the sentiment in white. So I'm using clear ink, and I masked the happy part so it just says Valentine's Day and I'm using my white embossing powder from Fawn Fawn. I'll sprinkle that all over the banner, tap it off and I will melt that with my heat tool. Here it is. And then I'm going to stamp out the other banner with the word happy. You can see I, I tried it once. I had it up too high so nice thing with the banner is I can use the other side and pour my embossing powder on there, tap it off and melt that. And then I have two banners ready to go. I'll add some foam adhesive to the back of both of the banners, uh, raise them up a little bit, and then adhere those to my card. And I'll snip off the part that's hanging off the edge of the card for that top banner. And then this card is all set. I hope you enjoyed the video today and it inspired you to create a one layer scene using masks or maybe make a Valentine card for a favorite teacher. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!